What's up, bitches? Another video of my magic hands talking to you. All right, so uh, the last video I was showing, I was making something here, you know, and uh, you know for the the foot clutch. If you want to make a foot clutch for your uh, XS650, first I'm gonna give a better demonstration of what was what actually goes on. All right, inside your stator cover here and little housing here, um, you have. This is the exact one, except for this one's currently broken because, well, reasons. This one's an unbroken one, except for this one is the exact opposite mirror image of this. The threads are the exact opposite way. Also, Yamaha bolts right in. It just um, turns the wrong frickin' direction. But it doesn't matter. It gives you an idea of what's going on. Okay. So your uh, original... Uh, screw here when you pull your clutch this lever pulls on here causes this to rotate when it rotates in the housing it pushes away there whoop away from the housing okay pushing the little ball that's in here uh, against there's a push rod that sticks it comes out of the side of your uh uh, transmission housing here and uh, reaches all the way to the other side and de releases the clutch okay hopefully you understand that so it pushes the rod through the use of the twisting motion by growing its length okay so that's how it fundamentally releases now the idea here is I want to make a foot clutch and there's a couple different ways you can do that um, Here's how I'm choosing to do it. Now I took my stock one and I thought, I don't want to fuck this up. I want to be able to return this thing back to stock if I ever want to someday. So I picked up an extra one. Now it does not have the adjuster uh, screw. If you see in the original one, there is a nut right here. And this rod, this uh, Phillips, uh, actually <laughs> it's probably JIS, but whatever, you know, data potato. Um, you loosen the nut and then this adjusts your preload pressure onto your clutch. Uh, it takes most of the slack out and then you do fine point adjustments on the clutch cable up by the uh, by your little uh, with your little dick beater up there. Okay now we're gonna set this off to the side because we don't need it. We're not really gonna look at that no more. This was the extra one I made or I, I got. Now did a couple things. Number one I initially I took the threads out of it. The originals have threads in there, right? Maybe you can focus. There's threads in that hole right there in the center. Okay. And here, maybe it'll focus better now. Anyway, they're a uh, uh, M8, eight millimeter, 1.25 thread pitch. Okay. Now, those are all fine and dandy and, and whatnot for the stock setup because they're threaded for that little, remember the little uh, Phillips head? bolt screws in there or it's a threaded rod whatever my idea was make this longer so that it sticks out of the housing so normally all you see sticking out of here is just this little little bit like that and you take your little screwdriver you pop off your little uh, beauty you know little chromey beauty cover thing here and you make your adjustment and you pop it back on you nobody can see it okay well what if that instead of having that uh, little beauty cover here, which I actually intend to punch a hole through the center of this for this whole thing, but that's very minor thing, just drill a hole through for a piece of sheet metal. Um, I've made, modified this and recreated another piece for it. Now, my initial one worked, but it forced me to take this and one of these and then weld that together. Now just imagine how tight you gotta weld that thing and have any kind of strength. And then trying to mill, trying to file that down so that these threads work. Because why? It still has to go through the nylon from the inside. So it has to go all the way through and then screw in. Actually, I'll probably be better off doing this way and then go like this. So this housing had to be the correct, or this piece had to be fit the, to go through the housing through your cover. 
hope this is making any kind of sense. And then it sticks out just a little tiny bit or sticks out a couple inches. Um, the idea there is all I wanted was a rod that comes out of my uh, thing here that if I turn the rod, the clutch gets released, pushes it in. Okay, hope everybody's following me along now. now so the first one was welded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, reasons. It, it wasn't. It wasn't my best design. Second one, I made remade this piece. Except for this time, sorry, I got cicadas in the background here because you know Tennessee and the fucking bugs. They love the bugs here. Um, oh, by the way, I don't have a cameraman. I don't have camera set up. I'm using my fucking cell phone here. So you know, you don't like it. Yeah, piss off. You didn't have to watch my videos. Now this one, as you can see, um, it was shown in the previous video on the lathe. But, uh, you know, I cut it for a uh, thing. I really wanted a fine thread here. I didn't have a fine thread tap and fine thread die to do fine threads. So, piss with the cock you got, right? Yeah, you know, or fuck them with the cock you got. That's what I usually say. Depends on the, the, the company. And, I, and I'd like to believe that the two of us here, you know, we have a more intimate relationship. You know, we're open to each other. And then I took this, and as you can see, it is also way up in there, a little harder to see there. Fresh thread. Ah, fuck. There you go. Focus in there. So the inside is the threaded. So this is threaded. This should thread right on here. Inside this piece, it's eight millimeter bored out, just hollow hole until the last little bit right here, which is threaded for a M8125. Um, I didn't really want to use SAE on any threads on this, but you know, eh, whatever. It's what it is. So to put this in, goes in the back way you know shoot her up the back door like this now um, I actually even though this is I kind of against the I didn't really want to but I did it anyway um, I put a slot cut in there with a the Dremel made it like a screw just in case you know you got to unscrew this thing or screw it in and it's I got the threads pretty damn smooth here so look at that she's coming right out and that right there it's a uh, inverted Torx um, again I can make more of these studs whatever you could actually have this thing with uh, um, a slot cut on the outside and just use all thread really doesn't fucking matter i chose to do it the way i did it because i chose to do it the way i did it now i'm going to screw this together like that and we're lightly snugging it up and suddenly we have a piece that works it fits just fine. Now, what do I do with my uh, housing? Now, this housing is broken, but it still kind of works. So, slide through. And, whoop. She's right in there. Um, I have a new one of these or another one coming. So, now you turn this rod and she works. This end should press against the uh, little... Just a little ball bearing here. You don't really have to. You can do it just with a straight rod, but who cares? Uh, it kind of eliminates any of the rotating wear that you'll get onto the rod directly from your adjuster. And you can push this ball, well, you screw it in and right far enough, and it'll make the ball pop right out if you wanted it to. We're not trying to do that. We don't need all that. Now, the next part of this, which I have not accomplished yet, or have not done yet, but it's showing a fucking hole and a uh, little couple thread taps. Uh, we're going to drill in between these uh, threads on here and do a set screw of some kind. Um, I think if I really put some Loctite on this thing overnight and just reef this fucker in tight, she should fucking stay. And the thing is, is when you push your clutch, it's going to be pushing it the remove way. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So it's going to go the opposite direction that uh, we really want. But, you know, that's the idea of the set screw. I could also do a single little tack weld or something. It ain't coming loose. But, you know, if it ever does, it's not like it's not a fixable thing. But I just don't want to be, you know, 100 miles from home and, you know, with my <laughs> one gallon fuel tank and whatnot. But that's a separate issue. Now, you're asking, well, what about the rest of this? How do you rotate it? Well, and from the previous uh, video, I showed you I made this. Now, you can use any fucking thing, really. 
but this right here will press fit onto it. Um, so you got to kind of drive it on. I may put a flat on this, drill it and tap it for a set screw. That'd work. Um, I could tack weld it back on, but if I weld it back on, then you got to cut the weld to get the fucking Jesus thing apart because it will be captured within this. You're not getting the fucking thing off <laughs> without cutting the weld. And, you know, nobody wants to do that. So make it serviceable for, uh, you know, for future, uh, for future dicks out there who might want to. There. So that's how you make that part. This is just an extra um, shifter thing that I had. What the hell did I do with my original uh, foot shifter thing? And I did it somewhere around here. I set it down and now I done lost it. But uh, just got the spline. Now you can actually use, I believe, the same thing that's on your uh, rear drum brake. So if you happen to have the original uh, splined piece that goes onto your rear drum brake, I believe it's the same freaking thread, or the same splines on there. And you can get one from off of one of those if you have that laying around. It's a somewhat common Japanese older bikes. I'm probably all a bunch of, whole bunch of Yamahas probably have it, and probably all the Suzuki's and Kawasaki's and Hondas and shit. But I really don't know. Don't quote me on that shit. I don't fucking know. And then you bend it to the shape you like. And she fits. Oh, here's what I did with it. It was on the fucking bike. <laughs> so you take one of these things. Yeah, pick an arbitrary amount off and do it. And I'm doing it below my stock mid controls. So you kind of have to put them together on a, a little at a time together. And somewhere right about there. And boom, boom. Forward for first, or downshift. And then down, down, or going to the back, toward the back wheel, for each gear after that. Now you're selling it yourself. Well, that's an awful lot of uh, weight on there. This thing's pretty fucking light. Um, it kind of bounces a little. Boing, boing, boing. It's not like it's a constant dragging. Maybe I'll have a problem. Maybe I won't. I mean, the, the, this is, it's a rat bike. You know, I don't think I've ever ridden this thing more than uh, 150 miles away. So, I mean... Usually, if she if we're going to for other states, we're uh, we're straight up uh, um, trailering it, so it doesn't really matter. And then this comes out like about like that, give or take. And I'm gonna pick up the phone here and try and show you all. Hey, this is fucking conky. So I'm hoping somebody can see and tell what the hell we're looking at here. Oh, because I can't see what the video the screen is doing. So, um, this little, uh, little tab is still going to be on there because I'm still going to put the return spring on it. I may increase the value of the return spring there. And so you hopefully, uh, I'm trying to get a fucking angle here and I'm not the best at this. I'm not, a, I'm no videographer and uh, let, actually let me, uh, let me see if this will work. Hopefully we're still recording. All right, that's a little bit better. I can fucking see what the fuck I'm doing. So, uh, you got your, oh, oh, she's not quite press fit on there yet, so. And you got to envision that the housing is still on here. And so when you press your uh, pedal, or press your wrench pedal, now you could use anything you want. You could take any kind of, um, I almost, uh, machine this for like four square or for a square on the outside and then used a square box or a square kind of uh bent wrench or something else or something as long as it attaches to here we don't fucking matter um you could probably even thread the outside of this thing and then thread something on there with a nut put some flats on here however you want to do it but you only got so much material to work with so don't get fucking carried away and make any kind of a pedal. Now you can't have just a freaking straight out. You need this extra leverage for this being way out here. So that's the key to that. Um, I don't know if anybody uh, is gonna learn anything from this, but you know, that's what I, uh, that's what I done. And with all this back in place, ideally all you'll see sticking out of uh, 
Where the hell did I do with the cover? Oh, there it is. Out of your cover. Ah, got that sitting in there. This shaft will be sticking straight out with a wrench on it that sticks up. And that's it. And yeah, that's on upside down. It's been upside down since, I, uh, since I've ever owned a bike. Because, you know, whatever. And, you know, she just a... Uh, you're just a shitty little rat bike who the hell cares but you know i like it it's fun uh recharging the battery because this uh, dumb monkey uh left the uh thing start button for the emergency uh starter situations you know those you done stall it like a goofus and you don't want to look stupid fucking trying to kick the motherfucker and then the on button boom she lights up no key so make steal it i guess right there hit your starter and she works, but we're not starting it up because my wife's on the other side of that wall trying to fucking sleep right now. And, uh, la cucaracha, the little cockroach. You know, so that's, uh, how you make a foot clutch. Uh, on the cheap, cheap, cheap. You could probably do this, uh, if you got some, you could probably get by with some 9 sixteenths threaded uh not um bar stock a few inches of that tap the one end for your uh, adjuster you could probably use all thread on this instead of uh, the two-piece thing that i did or the or not two-piece but where it's threaded and then straight shanked if you use all thread save you you know you can just buy the other thing it doesn't have to be uh uh m8 it could be uh five sixteenths the same fucking thing and you can get that at the hardware store cutting the threads on this you're going to have to get a die you're going to have to get a, a tap for that you don't really have a choice and whatever tap you use for whatever size bolt you use here you can use sae just for commonality and easy getting parts or getting shit you could probably do this with nothing more than a fucking vise a drill and a little bit of freaking a uh, couple other uh taps and whatnot uh making the shifter thing okay that's all that's more of a welder kind of thing but you could probably fabric cobble something up with them you know bolting things together and bending some metal uh that's just some three eighths inch freaking cheap rod that you know bar stock i pulled out of one of my buckets of bar stock and scrap metal now that's uh, that solution. The next part we're talking here is uh, this is another solution of the similar vein. This is a brake master cylinder. You know, usually meant to go on that side, but it doesn't fucking matter. It can't tell up or down. I mean, it's 2023. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's a girl. Maybe it's a boy. I don't know. It's got the little donger here, but you know, <laughs> who knows? Um, so that's going to be master cylinder and this is a, a future project so we're gonna try we're gonna ride around this thing with just the foot clutch uh, in the conventional thing but we are switching and converting if I can find my piece here which I have it here somewhere um, I had made I, it was here before I, we went to Michigan where the hell did it go I'm making my own clutch master cylinder. Here, let me pause this for a second. 